I am Bob Dickinson of Innovice, and we're looking at a, the SWIM5 QAQC interface that shows some hidden variables inside the SWIM5 code. What we're going to look at right now is how SWIM5 determines the variable time step. So if you click on options and go to a dynamic wave option, there's a variable time step. So if you use the variable time step based on the current uh, velocity and depth in the links, it'll, and also the flow going into the node, it'll determine what the um, CFL or the, or the limiting explicit time step is. The maximum time step that the model uses will be the <coughs> base byte on the, on the routing time step. So if we click here, run the model, and then we go to graph the system data, and then I'm going to look at the um, look at the, uh, the, the, the time step that's actually used in the model, the link time steps, and the node time steps. So you can see here, the node time steps are basically 30 seconds. The link time steps, when the flow increase, decrease down to about 5 seconds or 6 seconds. And the actual time step used during the simulation was basically the time step of, of, the, no, of the links. So it, it calculates the minimum node and the minimum link time step and then determines from that what the current value will be for the time step. Okay, now what happens if we uh, come back here to options and we turn off um, variable time step? We click off variable time step, solve the model. And you can see that basically the, t the model uses um, <coughs> the constant time step of 30 seconds, even though it really wanted to use a smaller time step. So that's a little bit about the time step in SWIM 5. I would always encourage you to use the variable time step. It makes the model much more stable and, and better for you. Thank you for, thank you for listening, and I hope you uh, learned something about the time step selection inside of SWIM 5.